Hello friends! Welcome to today's video. It is going to be a bookish themed one. I know that you know that I'm a reader and I know that you guys are also readers. A lot of you guys are and so I have been incorporating a lot more of that content into my channel because it's all I want to do, okay? It's all I want to talk about, it's all I want to think about, it's all I want to do. And so it's so fun with me to be able to share it with you guys. And I know you guys have been enjoying it as well. So today's video is going to be all themed, all the book things that I've been enjoying. We are going to um, make my April TBR. We are going to pick my April TBR. We're going to take a gander at my new TBR jar. We are going to unbox and open some packages and do a little bookie haul and we are gonna go over a little bit more in depth of my reading journal as well as add a bit to it together. And so it's just gonna be a little smish mash of all different things that are book related and things that bring me joy. I've had a lot of you guys ask for some book reviews um, over some of the books that I have hauled or shared with you guys and I wanted to do that in this video but I think it's gonna be a little bit bigger or a little bit longer than anticipated and so I think I'm gonna make that into a separate video by itself and it's just gonna be kind of like all the different books that I've read for the first three months of this year and kind of what got me through my seasonal depression is now now that we enter into springtime so um, that's gonna come your way really soon as well because I have so many books that were incredible and some that are quite hyped up on the list um, I feel like in the book world book universe book talk that I was not a fan of and so you know just a little mixed bag there so I want to share that with you guys as well but that will be in a separate video today is all other fun things that are book related um, and so we're gonna go get started on that All right, I don't wanna go into too much detail because we'll be here forever. So we're gonna jump in. First book is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a collector's edition. I've been wanting to read this series for a very long time, um, but I have just been trying to like tackle all the other like really big series, right? But this is one that's another one that's like very popular. Um, and I was gonna just order the paperbacks, you know, no biggie. They're all really inexpensive right now on like Amazon and Target and everywhere. And I saw this and I really hope I like this series <laughs> because this is one of the most beautiful collector's editions I've ever seen. It's like faux velvet with this beautiful like glossy embossing on the front and back cover and then the edges are sprayed this like gray carbon color. The beautiful inside illustrations like if a book like this is how I feel I am you know which may be scary to some, but this is one of the most beautiful, stunning things I've ever seen. I want to get a little stand so I can just have this displayed because it's so pretty. Anyway, it comes in its little protective sleeve. I can't wait to read this. I have been wanting, I, this is one of the series that's like, people I feel like either absolutely love it, it's one of their all-time faves, or they really do not like it. And I think that's what's kept me from reading it because I've been scared I'm not gonna like it. But it just sounds so good to me. So, fingers crossed. The next book is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This is a book that has been, I feel like, loved unanimously, uh, unanimously across all genre readers. 
I have never seen someone talk bad about this. They could be a traditional romance reader. They could enjoy literary fiction. They could enjoy thrillers. They could whatever. I feel like everyone who has read this book has loved it and rated it five stars. Um, I do believe that this follows a group of friends who or co-workers who are in video game design. That's about all I know. But I hear it's fantastic and wonderful and amazing. It gives me fun synthwave vibes, which vibes, which is totally my fave. So we'll see. I'm really excited to read this. Um, hopefully it lives up to all the hype that I feel like I constantly see about it. This is another series that I don't know about, but I, it's again, it's another one that I'm just like, you know what? What I got to lose? So it's The Zodiac Academy by Caroline Peckham and Susan Valenti. This is book one. There are a lot of books in this series, um, so we're gonna find out how I feel about it. I don't know. Again, I feel like some are absolutely like it's fantastic and other people are like it's really not great. Um, at this point, I'm trying everything. All right, this next book I have is I Hope This Doesn't Find You by Anne Leong. Lean? Leong? I'm so sorry if I'm saying that last name wrong. Um, this was a random pre-order. It sounded really cute to me and um, this was like highly recommended if you loved like To All the Boys I Loved Before. Um, and I, you know, I love a good YA. I still love a good YA. I may be almost 33 years old, but I think that they are still super fun to read, especially if the plot is good. Um, and I can still, I feel like I can still feel <laughs> similar to a lot of the characters, even though I'm 33 and not in high school anymore. But I don't know, man, there's something that's just so nostalgic to me about YA, so I love to enjoy it. And this looks so gosh darn cute. And uh, I love To All the Boys I Loved Before. Um, so I was all down for that. Anyway, we'll see. I have no idea. Don't even know what it's about. I just know it's a cute, like, YA romance, I believe. Next, we have Slain the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent. Carissa is the author of the Crown of Nyaxia series, and if you tell me to repeat the first two, couldn't tell you again. Serpent in the Wings of the Night. I think that's right. I think that's right. I think that's the first one. I freaking love that series, and this is the same time, the same thing I said in my last book haul, is I can never remember the freaking title. However, I loved those two books. I have not finished with the, there's a novella that I need to read, but she also wrote this, and uh, it has really high ratings. Um, and I think this was under like a Goodreads Choice nominee for the year. So um, we're gonna try it. It looks, I got a different cover because I did not like how cheesy the other cover looked. So this one looks cool. I'm excited. I really, really enjoyed Serpent. Um, along the same lines of fantasy, I got this bad boy. This was a pre-order and one of my most anticipated ones as well. This is a Fate Inked in Blood. This is a uh, Saga of the Unfated, book one. And it's by Danielle L. Jensen. She is the author of the Bridge Kingdom series, which if you have not read that series, they're on Kindle Unlimited. And if you also have Audible, like the Subscription Plus, and you get all the extra books, it's, they're narrated on there. Um, they're included in that subscription. I loved that series. I highly recommend it. I do not think it's the hype it deserves. It is so underrated. It is so good. The characters are great. The character arcs and plot development and character development. The political world um, escape is it's just top tier my friend. Um, so I was really really excited about this. Also how stunning again the most beautiful cover ever. So pretty it's embossed and then the sides are this like beautiful aqua tealy blue that are glittery and metallic. It's so pretty. I'm so excited. <laughs> Just such a pretty book. And then I got A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. Uh, she's the author of Seven Days in June, which is also still on my uh, TBR. And I've been wanting to read it for a while, but they, I've only been able to get the paperbacks that have that like cut out here. And then they just said it's like a New York Times bestseller. I hate when books look like do that. So I want to get it on hardcover. She's another author who has beautiful cover designs. This is just so stunning. So, so pretty. I know that it's about uh, romance. It's about it. But she is an incredible author and I'm very excited. This has been getting rave reviews as well. And so honestly, you have me at the cover, to be honest. I am very excited. It looks so freaking pretty. This is the first book in the Shadow and the Embers series um, by, or no, Flesh and Fire series. This is the first book, Shadow and the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. 
She's the author of Blood and Ash. That was the book series that got me crazy back into reading. I loved that series so much. I still have to continue reading it. We fell behind. But honestly, it's obviously a very dense series just like this one and I have to catch up. Man, it is it's a lot. You got to keep track of a lot and it's really confusing. So I kind of want to go back and reread, but I hear that the Flesh and Fire series, which is interwoven with the Blood and Ash series is even better. And I've been wanting to read this for a couple years now, so I'm excited. I hear incredible things. So we will see. The Seven Year Slip is also a super incredibly hyped book um, from last year. I feel like this was also on the Goods Choice nominee, but I'm not positive. Um, I haven't read it, clearly. I have read something else by Ashley Poston, which was the Dead Romantics and was like, eh, so we'll see. But I really enjoy the like contemporary romance mixed with like a paranormal romance aspect of it. Um, and that's the same one with this, like same style. So I know that they go back in time, like time travel, very lake house vibe to me. Um, so we'll see, I don't know. I, I mean, people rave and rave, but they ra raved and raved about the last one. I didn't love it. This is another book. <laughs> I tell you that I'm like, I don't like standalone interwoven romances, but I keep getting them. But this one again, it's incredibly highly rated and I want to find one that I just am like, oh, it's so good. Um, this is the fake out. This is from the Vancouver Storm series and I love a good hockey romance. I freaking love a good hockey romance. I never thought I would like a sports romance. Never thought I was that gal, but apparently I've surprised myself. This cover is gosh darn cute. I know some people think it's cheesy. I love cartoon covers. I think they're so cute and fun. Um, this is a big boy though, so we'll see. I think it's pretty. It's a pretty big, a pretty big one for a contemporary romance. It's about Rory and Hazel. Love the names. I'm excited. I hear this whole series is really good. So fingers crossed, we f we find one that is meant for me. Along that same line, and this one looks hurt already. The cover's bent. I have to freaking return this. I am so weird about like having perfect books when they come in. I hate when they're bent or hurt in any way. I bet the people at Staples think I'm like reading them and taking them back, but I promise I'm not. I like cannot stand when it gets hurt. Anyway, this is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. I, to be honest, her Dreamland Billionaire series, I thoroughly enjoyed. And that was an interwoven, interconnected, standalone romance series. And the fine print was my favorite, and I still think about that one. So maybe that, I didn't love the other two as much, but the first one got me. So I'm still trying to, I'm riding that high. So let's hope she comes through again. This one has pretty good freaking reviews. The second one's coming out really soon. It's also, it's way more chunky. We're finding some, we're finding some girthies. Honestly, I have no idea what it's about, but it's raved. I have never seen or heard about this book but I found it at Walmart and it sounded so freaking cute. It's Dungeons and Drama and it's this just cute little like contemporary romance and it takes place at like a gaming store and I can't, I mean, this girl falls in love with one of the guys that works there and he's super nerdy and cute and loves Dungeons and Dragons and like, I don't know, this just sounded like so wholesome and so adorable. So, I mean, it was like really inexpensive at Walmart and I just, I thought it was so freaking cute. So, no idea. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but isn't that the cutest little thing? Fingers crossed that one's good too. Like, I even love like the, the spine. Like, I love seeing that. Anyway. Um, Keeper of Enchanted Rooms was another really popular one from last year. Charlie in Holmberg, another really popular book from last year. Um, she, this I think is actually part of a series, which I had no idea about. So, but again, this one that is like incredibly highly rated. Um, I know that there's kind of some like creepy eeriness to that, which gets me along with the romance. Um, and a haunted house vibe. I don't know. I've never read anything like that. So, we're gonna try it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. The things that I've heard about this have been slightly disturbing <laughs> and not my vibe. But then there are other people that will literally like, this is the best thing we've ever read in their whole entire lives. And I know this is also a series that like rips your heart out. And I've been looking for one of those. High, high expectations, but also very hesitant expectations. This is the Raven Hood series by Kate Stewart. This is the first book, I believe. I think this is the first book. This is Flock. I'm not sure if it is the first book. I don't know how to feel, but we're gonna try it. Okay, we're getting close. We got the prison healer. This is like dystopian YA. 
really good reviews. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Really good ratings. I think this is supposed to be fun. I'm looking for something fun, for something dystopian-y, for some Hunger Games-y thriller vibes. I don't know. There's, it's a series. This is another one that's really highly rated. This is a Magnolia Park series by Jessa Hastings. The one thing that I like about this so far is that I see people like be really into this, but also it seems to be, it's not standalone, I don't think. So it's like interwoven long series with like a couple you're vying for. I'm not sure. We're going into it mostly blind, but that's what I'm looking for. I don't want a happy ending at the book one. I need it long drawn out, okay? I need the angst and the, the heartache and the desire. So we'll see. I think this is not, I think this is like the US cover. It's, they have other covers. The other covers look very fantastical and not like this at all. So honestly, I don't know what I'm getting out of this, but I do believe this takes place in England. London specifically. That's all I know. Um, Archer's voice. This is one I hear that rips your heart out. So fingers crossed. And this one apparently has an extended epilogue. Gonna, no idea. No idea, I'm gonna guess someone dies. Hopefully that's not a spoiler. If it is, I spilled it for myself because I have no idea what happens. Lastly, this is a book of the month for myself. This is a Heartless Hunter, the Crimson Moth book one. This apparently, like, it took him forever for them to send this to me because they were so backstocked because everyone had ordered this one for book of the month and then it like was selling out places i hear it's fantastic the cover is just beautiful and like whimsical and enchanting and cool um her deadliest enemy or her greatest love i think she's like a witch hunter or he's a witch hunter and she's a witch or he's a warlock and she's a witch hunter i don't know um but there's magic there's forbidden love or enemies to lovers we're going along for the ride and it's book one so we got a series to go along with i did it before my camera died because my battery's flashing i'm so proud of myself we did it we made it through these are all the books that i brought bought no judgment hopefully i gave you some new some new ones because I, there's a lot of new ones to me but this one i've never heard anybody talk about you guys are like no it's terrible hopefully not because it looks so cute i really have high hopes for that that is it okay all right so first off, please ignore the um, tear streaks and my runny nose. I cried earlier today. No biggie. Um, we're fine. But I um, wanted to pick my next monthly picks and I wanted to share with you guys something new that I started doing. Um, and that's making like a little TBR jar. Um, let, me, hold on, let me get situated on the floor. All right. So ignore the lighting, the sun's going down. So we're just gonna make do, okay? Anyway, what I was saying was that I created a TBR jar. Now this just houses my physical TBR. If I put my actual like Goodreads TBR on here, this would be, I would need like a giant trash can filled with paper stars. And I made them in individual little paper star shapes. They're super, super cute. I saw a TikTok of a girl who um, was sharing that she made paper stars. <laughs> And they were so cute um, and I thought like that would be such a fun idea to like fill and it would be fun to display on a bookshelf of all these little paper stars and put them with my TBR because I've seen a bunch of TBR jars and I thought like the paper star thing was super cute. Well, I tried it for like five days and I couldn't get the hang of it and I was like so close to giving up but I was so persistent I was like I don't want to I really want to get this down like this can't be this hard and I finally did it okay, we are trying to make paper stars I have tried for this is day four I have yet to make one paper star I've watched so many tutorials I can't figure it out let me move the if you comment the moo cows if you comment please let us know if you have an easier video Yes, if you have a like a really good tutorial, let us know. Or Ollie's trying to help. Or a custom video. So I know you fold it towards you, do the ribbon thing. And then make a pentagon. These pieces of papers are the ones that we're using. They're specifically made for making these little stars. We got them off Amazon. But you also can use lined paper and cut on the lines. Like Yeah, like notebook paper. Mm -hmm. But it's like has lines on it. Oh, I got it tucked in. <gasps> maybe this is maybe this is the one, Ollie. There, there's sad my star. little sad star. But hey, it's a star. I did it. Day four, 
and I slightly made a star. 20, We're getting there. What, 25th time of charm. Probably 25th time. Hopefully they get better. I did it! I made a second one. It's cute. It's cute. It is cuter. We're getting there. We're making progress. I want to make these for a little TBR jar. And so I want to write inside all the different books I have on my physical TBR. And then I will just pick one when I need to, you know, read a new book. But I need to get good at folding the stars fully before I start writing and ruining the pages. So I'm going to practice a couple more times. But it's only, it only took me four days till I finally could do it. It's a little wonky, but it's better than the first one. So we are truly making progress here. Look at him. Maybe. Look at him. Maybe. It's like Patrick and Sponge. Maybe. And then I haven't stopped. I think making these gosh darn stars are so, it's so relaxing and really, really enjoyable. And I highly recommend it. Um, my kids joke with me and so does my husband about me making paper stars all the time. But there's something that is so relaxing about it and it just it's like completely calms my mind it quiets my mind i can focus on it i can listen to an audiobook or watch a show but i'm not thinking about all of the to-dos or any anxiety or anything it's just like ceases every like thought that's just raging crazy in my head it's so relaxing i highly recommend it i got like a big old paper star thing off of Amazon for like next to nothing and it's been such a fun activity. But anyway, I filled every star, wrote on every star the title of one of the books on the shelves that I haven't read. Um, these don't have prompts any of anything in them like pick a romance or pick a thriller or pick a pink cover or anything. It doesn't have anything like that. It just currently houses just the um, titles of each book. When I get farther down on this, then I think it'd be fun to add a prompt. But right now, it's just pretty basic because we're just starting off. So I'm going to pick at least one from here. And then I'm also going to um, share with you guys some Kindle options. We're going to pick a Kindle option together because I want to be reading at least one physical TBR from my TBR jar. I want to do a Kindle option off my Kindle and an audiobook. Um, and those are just the basic three. I will definitely add from there on, but at least three a month, I wanna knock those out. So I figured we can pick them out together and share them together. If I pick a series, because I do have like the beginning or the first book in a series in here, then that's my commitment. Like if I pick um, like Throne of Glass or Assassin's Blade out of here, that's, that's it, okay? Like I will be finishing that until, or I will read that book until, or that series until I'm finished. I didn't put um, random, like the second or third or fourth book randomly in here because I feel like that would be really confusing for me and I like to start a series and just finish it on through. I really hate having to wait um, unless it obviously hasn't pu been published yet. So there are some series in here and duologies and sagas and all that sort of stuff. So we will see how, how that goes. But if I do pick one, that's like a commitment that I'll at least like start the series and complete it. Um, Anyway, so we're just gonna pick from here. I, none of these have any different like meanings or the colors don't mean anything. They're just... Okay, we got, we got blue. We got blue. Okay, the issue is as cute as they are, they're a complete pain to unfold and they tear easily. So I gotta be careful. Now I don't know where I wrote on this one. <laughs> Did I write on this one? Did I miss it? Okay, sorry, it was on the other side. <laughs> All right, we got Divine Rivals. So I'm super, super excited about this. I haven't read this obviously yet. This is a duet. So I do have both, um, the first and second. Let me get them out. I do have both book one and book two. So I'm gonna drag them both out. Well, at least start with the first one right now. We have Divine Rivals, which this I believe is a YA historical romance. And honestly, like I only see five star ratings for this. So I have very high expectations. <laughs> Hopefully it lives up to the hype. It's beautiful cover. I hear it's a beautiful, very sweet romantic story. I will bring out Ruth Liz Bowes as well. Um, this is the second book in the duet. 
um, duology, what have you. Anyway, this one's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger. But this is um, Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. So we're going to start there. I'm only going to pick one star this time because that ended up kind of being a bit more of a commitment than anticipated. Um, but there are other books that I do want to read this month. I have been on kind of like a, not necessarily a dark romance kick, but more of a like darker mental health awareness kind of, I don't know, <laughs> kick. So I do want to keep something like in that family. And I've been really, really wanting to read The Fabric of Our Souls by K. M. Mor Moronova. Um, one, the the cover of this is just absolutely breathtaking and I've heard nothing but incredibly good things. So I do want to add this to um, the TBR for the month and another physical TBR. I'm going to stop there for now. Maybe, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll be crazy and add something else. Let's add something else. Let's be crazy. What else do I want to add? Okay, so I am going to do one more and I'm going to do a little bit, I think more of a lighthearted book. Um, this is a contemporary romance or a hockey romance. Um, called The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the Vancouver from the Vancouver Storm series. This is book one. I've heard really good things of this one. It looks super, super cute from the cover. I love a good, like, cute, cartoony cover. I love them. And this book feels really nice in your hands. I know that it doesn't really matter, but for some people, like, if a cover doesn't feel nice, it's hard for me not to focus on it. So this one feels nice. So, okay, this is my physical TBR we're going to go with for this month. And then we're going to go ahead and add some audiobooks to this, as well as um, some Kindle books. So right now, we're going with four physical books. And let's add some stuff on our Kindle and audiobook. All right, Kindle time. I just finished wor The Words by Ashley Jade. And uh, that was a, a five-star right here. Just a quick little... Quick little review, five stars. Highly recommend. It's on Kindle Limited and it was fantastic. I really liked it. Okay, so we have some options here. So I finished Manacled at the beginning of January and was on a huge Dramine like obsession kick. And I wanted to continue down that rabbit hole ever since then. And so I downloaded a ton of different or saved a ton of different Dramine fan fiction. Um, and the next one I'm going to start is Secrets and Masks which I hear is also very good. So um, that's another little, but I downloaded it off of, you know, AO3. So AO3? That doesn't sound right. AO3. Archives of our own. AO3? You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's a fan fiction, so it doesn't have a really cute, pretty cover. But this is what we're going to start with. I'm excited. There, it is explicitly rated and there are quite a bit of warnings. So I hear this one's also pretty heartbreaking, but... Uh, Here's, here's to it. So we're going to go with Secrets and Masks for my Kindle. And then for an audiobook this month, let's see. All right. So the audiobook pick of the month is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Um, it is a Persephone and Hades retelling. Um, and I am throwing a birthday party for my friend who's turning 30. And um, we're doing like a Persephone kind of queen of the underworld theme and so I kind of want to be in my Persephone vibe and the era and aesthetic so we're gonna read that um I did read A Touch of Malice it was A Touch of Malice is the first book I can't remember by Scarlet St. Clair could also be wrong by the author but that series I did start the first one and I didn't love it so we will see how I feel about this one I feel like people are either on Neon God's side or A Touch of Malice side so we will see I don't know I don't know, but I'm in a Persephone uh, vibe. And speaking of, I also think that I'm going to go ahead and read um, my Lore of Olympus. Okay, I also am going to add Lore Olympus to the docket. This is going to be a, this is a packed month. This is a jam-packed month, but we'll see if I can get it all done. But I'm going to add Lore Olympus to the docket. This is volume one. It is a graphic novel, but since we are feeling very Persephone vibed and I want to feel really inspired for the party. Um, I want to read this too. So this has been on my TBR for over a year. I got this for Christmas last year and I have yet to read it, but it is a beautifully done um, graphic novel um, and I've been really excited to read it. So that ends it for the month and we've got a lot. We've got a lot. This is, this is probably way too large of a task, 
but I think I can do it. This isn't that many. I've done way more before, but I feel like I'm setting myself up for failure. We'll see. But this is my TBR for this month. I'm excited. All right, so here is my reading journal. Um, we have come a long way since I last showed you guys. So we still have still have our cover page, which is the reading records of 2024, which I'm so glad that I made it like this considering uh, Taylor's new release of the Tortured Poets Department because this gives me that vibe and I love it. Um, and then we have our book of the year with our book brackets. I've only filled in January so far. I need to fill, fill in February and March now. Um, but January's hint hint was manacled was my favorite book of that month. And then we have my cute little book tracker of shelves. I am angry with myself that I just decided to do like a random color pattern that I do not like. I wish that it went more with the vibe of this page, but uh, it is what it is. I also have to add more to this because I've definitely read more than that now as well. And here is my like A to Z little guy of all the different books because I'm trying to get at least the majority of this filled and it's just a book for every letter of the alphabet. So we have B for Bride by Allie Hazelwood, House of Flame and Shadow, uh, King of Wrath, Manicold, uh, There Are No Saints. I have obviously read more than this, but these are just for those letters. And then our little book bucket list slash our little tic-tac-toe option. Um, so, so far I've done a vampire romance. We've done a book with magic, a complete book series we finished. Um, I know that there's more to add it to into this. I think we've also done a mystery. I need to add more, but so far, so good. The next page is my 2024, like, reading progress, full on readings and every book I've read. I do also have to, have to add to this one um, because it's missing a number of the titles, but I can only do four for every single um, like picture. And at the time when I ended this, I didn't have enough, but now I definitely can at least fill out this page. Um, but I did have a number of other pages like afterwards to be able to continue on because I know that this is absolutely not enough but there's a number of them back here I don't know if I'm going to stick with the same um header for every single one afterwards but so far this is what we got I had glue and now it's all sticky so that's not cute but we're this is our first time you know we're learning we're learning so again like I have a number of pages for that then we swing on over to January and for January's themed we did manacled because why wouldn't we I read it and I was obsessed so um highly recommend if you love Harry Potter fan fiction this was so good um and I just printed a bunch of different pictures and I loved it. I freaking am so good, guys. Okay, so that's the uh, opener page. And this is kind of how I've been doing the months. Again, this isn't perfect. I'm going to try to figure out what works, what doesn't work as time goes on. But it ended up kind of turning out into this like 1989 <laughs> vibed uh, page layout. So I just wrote like a fun little Taylor lyric with Aurora's and Sad Pros. Um, the books I read this month, how many pages I read, and um, I also did my favorite songs for the month. Uh, and my absolute favorite was Tiny Moves by Bleachers and then my book of the month, the one I liked the most that month and then just other things that I enjoyed, different pictures that inspired me, things like that um, and I'm just going to continue to add as the months go. So after January, we're moving on to February and I loved the cute little suckers, the heart suckers that I did um, and then this month is very similar. Um, I still have to put my book of the month in but these are the songs that I was listening to a lot um, my quote was also a Taylor lyric, but it just, I was all into the love theme and everything with her and Travi. Um, I just thought this was so cute. And then, uh, the books I read this month. And then, um, I had planned to do kind of like my favorite fictional couples, um, on these two pages and I haven't finished it. So we'll see if this happens. I definitely still want to use it, but that was my plan. I haven't finished the header on this side yet either, but... That was originally my plan. But we're getting to this page, which is what I wanted to share with you guys the most. Um, and 
This is essentially going to be my TBR like jar picker. So um, I made this cute little page that says for fate's sake and I made a bunch, drew a bunch of little crystal balls and it just looks so cute. Um, I also have a plenty of room. I saved a couple of pages, at least one more page for um, adding more from the TBR jar when I fill out both of these two pages. But I just thought this one turned out so gosh darn adorable. It made me so happy to do, it was so much fun. Um, so I'm going to write in our first official TBR pick that we did together, which was the Divine Rivals duology. I think I'm gonna go for this blue one right here because it gives me more Divine Rivals vibes. So basically it's just like my little crystal ball revealing all the different books that were hand selected for me. Um, and so I just thought this turned out so cute, I loved it. Okay, so that's my For Fate's Sake page. So we just added Divine Rivals for this month. This is what I've made for March. <laughs> um, it's not my fave. I think I'm gonna cover up this page because I definitely don't love the flowers. But I loved the little like, you know, cute little uh, lava lamp vibe. I thought that turned out really cute. I just don't love everything else I did. But still, this was March. I just felt like springy and groovy was really cute. Um, and then this is kind of the page layout that I have so far. I need now to fill it all in. But look how cute that turned out. I love like all of the kind of like Y2K, 90s like aesthetic of different little like the pink razor, he'll forget that. Um, the Bratz PS, uh, or no, it's just PlayStation game. Um, we got Uno, we got Game Boys, we got cassette tapes, uh, Pizza Hut, another lava lamp. I just thought that looked so cute. I loved it. This was so much fun to do. I had such a good time. Um, and then a good old classic um, film camera and then some little pink hair clips up here. So that has how March turned out. I thought that looked so cute, isn't it? So we should fill this out together. Um, and then that's it, I haven't done April yet. <laughs> I don't know what vibe I wanna go for for April. March ended up being so much fun to do. This took me like way too long and I was just jamming out and having the best time. This is what's been so much fun about the book journaling is because it has just like really opened up my mind um, and allowed myself to be just fun and creative just for the purpose for myself to bring myself joy and it is so much fun. I highly, Highly recommend journaling in some form or fashion, whether you read books or don't read books or whatever. It's just fun. It just is, it's completely screen free. I just get to enjoy myself. So, I mean, that's just not to say that I don't listen to music or listen to an audiobook, but you know what I'm saying. For the most part, we are doing screen free when we are using this. But that is that. Okay, we are back in the library where we spend the majority of this video. Um, if not, pretty much all of this video, but I'm gonna share with you guys the fun bookish merch that I have, as well as a couple more books because I have a problem. All of these are just different little goodies that I've gotten for Valentine's Day or little gifts that were given to me or things that I've recently purchased um, on my own. All right, the last couple of books I wanna share with you guys are all from a series that I've wanted to read for a very long time, and that is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. Now, the US covers, I think, are so bleh. I hate them. I think they're so ugly. No offense to anybody who likes them. I just find them really, really boring. Um, I used to see this cover a long time ago. I think this was like the original cover or one very similar when it was released. And then they changed it for whatever reason and I hate it. Luckily, you can still get this cover um, from a bookstore over in the UK and they ship free to the US. So I ordered and I was so excited for a great price. They all came in a relatively wonderful time frame and I cannot wait to start it finally. So I got the Once Upon a Broken Heart series by Stephanie Garber, so this is book one. Then we have book two, which is The Ballad of Never After. And then we have book three, which is A Curse for True Love. Now. This is an absolutely exquisite, stunning cover. But why on earth, why? Why, why is it so much bigger? It doesn't make any sense. I hate when publishers do this. It just doesn't, it's not like a larger print book. I don't know why. It drives me crazy. It's so pretty, but why do you have to make it not equal? Anyway, it isn't, it's fine. 
It's fine, it's still beautiful, I'm just annoyed. <laughs> um, but I can't wait to read those. I will have them linked for you guys below if you're interested, specifically with those covers. All right, let's move on to the good little merchy merch. All right, so most of this stuff is all from Valentine's Day that either my mom or Jazz got for me. And these items are from the bookish shop, which I shop at often, and I love to find like bookish, cutish merch from there. Um, and so if you are like me, I'm sure that you would enjoy it as well. But the first little item is this adorable little window um, scene, and this is from the Blood Forest. <sighs> The blood florist the blood forest um from blood and ash which is the series that honestly got me back into reading um i was addicted i couldn't put it down i loved it so much and i it's crazy to think that now i feel like it's very like controversial like people either love it or hate it oh my gosh i was recommending it to anybody and everybody because i thought it was so good so i love this little like scene that you can see here um of kieran is it gonna focus? It's probably not, there you go. And the blood forest, I almost did it again, did I do it? Blood forest, blood, blood forest. <laughs> anyway, I think it's gonna look so good, just chilling on my little vampire, kind of like blood red shelf up there. Um, I can't wait, it's so cute, I love it, I'm super excited. They do a number of these types of scenes with different like uh, book series, so it's not just Blood and Ash, if, that's, if you're not a fan. The next one is from the Bridge Kingdom, which I feel like I've talked to you guys about before, but I'm not sure. I started reading that last year when we were um, in the process of moving and I was like painting and I needed something to keep me occupied. Couldn't get enough. I was obsessed. I feel like it does not get enough hype. It is so good. I have now been collecting like all of the um, swords and daggers from all of the popular book series <laughs> because I love them and I just think these are so cool. This one is actually from the Bridge Kingdom, and um, look at the little pouch it comes in. It's a letter opener, but I just think it's so cool, and I don't open very many letters, so it's not what I'm using it for. Sometimes I do use book, uh, these for like bookmarks, but mostly just for a display, because I think they're so cool. But uh, Jazz gifted me that as well for Valentine's Day. And then for Valentine's Day as well, my mom, because um, you guys know how big of a Swifty I am, got me a little pack of bookmarks that are all like Taylor uh, looking like um, film strips that I think are some of from like red and like 1989 and they come with little tassels. I believe she got these on Amazon if I remember correctly. Um, and I'm so excited. I can't, I haven't fully opened it up because I've been saving to share it with you guys. Um, but they're just all different. Oh, I can use my letter opener. <laughs> this is what I should be using it for when I'm trying to open packages. It comes with a bunch of different tassels for each little film strip but we have red and they're front and back. We have 1989, we have Lover. Are you seeing these? I don't know if it's focusing. Then we have 1989 Taylor's version, which I love this. And then we have stills from the Eras tour. I love this. If you have a Swifty in your life, this is such a good little gift. I think this is so cute and like how happy. I love them and being able to put little tassels on them and I have now a bunch of Taylor bookmarks. So that was for my mom. I'm so thankful for that. That was such a cute little gift. Um, this would have been perfect for like Easter or little stocking stuffers. You, it's never too early, friends. It's never too early. <laughs> Anyway, I love that. I'm super excited for those. Okay, and then the last thing that Jazz got me um, for Valentine's Day was this cute little Sherpa. Um, this is actually a little book holder. So it keeps its little book sleeve. It keeps it all safe and sound. So if you travel with your books, um, specifically like I feel like hardcovers or paperbacks or anything like that, but you could also put your e-readers in here as well. Um, but it just keeps them nice and safe. So it has a little uh, button and you can keep it closed and put it in your tote or whatever. Um, but I love these. I used to have one that I got made from on Etsy like years and years and years ago and I don't know what happened to it um, and I loved it and so I was super excited that he picked this up for me because it's such a sweet little gift and I love it. So if you have again like this is such a good idea for a little uh, a reader in your life if you don't want to get them books or you don't know what to get them a little book sleeve. It's a great option. We have two packages that I haven't opened yet. Uh, this is another one from the bookshop. Can't remember what it is. And <laughs> this is one, can't remember what it is. So we're gonna open them together. Okay, 
Um, as you guys know, I'm a part of <laughs> some Taylor Facebook groups and they're my favorite place now to go on the internet. And I ordered some coasters <laughs> that are the Rep uh, Guitar Pick Little Dupes. And they're so cute. So she has four different ones and I just picked these two. You can buy a whole set or you can mix and match two. And I just love these. I'm super, super stoked. These are so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love them. And they even have little, little feet on the back. Oh, life is beautiful and I do have time. I love that. All right, I will have the shop linked down for you guys below if you're interested. She also makes Lover um, Live in Paris, like little, the heart-shaped vinyl coasters as well. And those are so cute, but I'm a rep girly through and through. So um, I'm super excited. These look beautiful, beautiful. Can't wait to use those in here. And then let's open this bad boy. I think this was a book that I probably pre-ordered like God knows how long ago. Ba -ba -da -ba. little um, pouch. This is my first time ordering a book from them. I normally just buy a bunch of merch, so. Uh, okay, yes, this is the Soul of Ash and Blood. Um, clearly, it was a Blood and Ash type of day. So, this is the most recent um, release from the Blood and Ash universe. And um, I have it. Where is it? Somewhere. Where is it? Oh, I have it in the paperback version up here, um, but this I could not, gosh darn, pass up. Look how stunning. Look how stunning that is. Oh my goodness gracious. This is so beautiful. This is like my first official like collector's book from like a, a small shop and I'm feeling really excited. The poppies on the pages, oh. It's a stunner. It's a stunner. This is so beautiful. I am so excited. So, um, we have yet to read this. My best friends and I were all reading this series together and we took a pause because my best friend had her baby, her first baby, and so she couldn't like devote her time and energy to um, the book quite. And then this is a this is a piece of work, you know. You got to you got to put some effort in because there's so much world building. One, but the look Oh my golly gee whiz, it's such a beautiful book. Anyway, um, and so we haven't read this new one yet, so I'm really excited to give it a read. Um, I love this universe. I've honestly been thinking about rereading the whole series again because I loved it so much. But this is the interior flap um, with some beautiful Poppy and Castile cover art. Oh my gosh, and I just got lip oil on it. Go me. Those are all the book things that I wanted to share with you. So um, let's let's move on to let's move on. Okay, so that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, definitely keep an eye out for the next bookish video coming your way, which will be kind of the um, reads that help me get through my seasonal depression or my winter reads or the first three months of the year reading wrap up, what have you. I have some good five star gems in there, but I also have some ones that I want to share with you guys as well um, because you need a good balance you know and also keep an eye out for some fashion content coming your way I have a lot of you guys asking for me to bring that back and that's how I started my channel so I'm excited to share some new videos um, along those lines with you guys and um, just lots of new ideas I'm feeling inspired I'm feeling excited and motivated and I just want to keep sharing my life with you guys thank you for always showing up and just being here um, you're always welcome there's always a place for you at this table and um, I love you guys I hope you're doing well and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys